Hello everybody, welcome back everyone to the latest installment of the Borak series. Coming fresh out of last Friday's Budget 2024 announcement, I think uh, pretty much has been spoken out there, but we want to put our message across, so we've actually managed to squeeze out a report on the important bits regarding the stock market as well as uh, basically Malaysia. Here to run us through everything, we once again have everyone's favourite regional head of equities research, Anand Pahmakantan, to tell us what his team has prepared. Uh, welcome back to the show, Anand. Uh, thank you, Najib. Good to be here. Okay, thanks. Let's kick this off uh, with an overview. Anand, I think the first thing that caught my eye was the 2% sales and services tax increased to 8%, as well as the 10% capital gains tax on unlisted shares. Do you think this is something that our investors should be worried about? Uh, yeah, those two measures, I don't think it's going to have a major impact uh, on the market. Uh, for the service tax increase, it only applies to very specific industries uh, and you know some big sectors are exempt like F&B uh, and tech. Uh, so it will apply to things like logistics, uh, brokerage, uh, underwriting, uh, as well as karaoke, uh, interestingly enough. In terms of the market impact, though, it is quite limited. We think uh, only the gaming sector will be negatively impacted uh, by the service tax increase. And this is because of the business model uh, of the gaming sector. Yeah, uh, Both the NFOs, or number forecast operators, as well as the casino, absorb the service tax on behalf of their customers. That's their business model. So effectively, an increase in the service tax will mean a, a, a reduction in their gaming margins. Having said that, though, it's not uh, you know, uh, something that they can't navigate around. Uh, they could potentially uh, you know, reduce payouts or take other cost-cutting measures to uh, mitigate for this impact. So overall, uh, we're looking at about a 3-4% to impact uh, on gaming sector earnings from the service tax increase. On the CGT, that's uh, even less of an issue, uh, you know, very much neutral on that. Uh, as you know, it only uh, applies to unlisted shares, so no direct relevance to, to listed equities. And it was made very clear that it would not apply uh, for IPOs uh, or uh, restructurings within the same group. So I think, you know, in terms of corporate activities uh, related to the stock market, uh, CGT should be quite neutral. I think in corporates as well as our investment bankers, I think that's a real, you know, sigh of relief. Uh, but not sure about the brokerage bit. I mean, they just increased by that. I think from the community, I think uh, probably we'll be able to uh, weather this particular stop. Mm. All right. Uh, okay. Then let's just get to the crux of it. I think uh, we would like to, you know, uh, if of interest to talk about the winners and the losers next. There are a few projects and initiatives announced under the budget, like the higher development budget allocation, which was, I think, historically the highest ever. Higher allocations also to boost tourism. Uh, we have got uh, Visit Malaysia Year in 2026 and a few targeted measures to accelerate Malaysia's digital infrastructure, just to name a few. Could you run us through which sectors and stocks stand to benefit from these initiatives? Yeah, so I think one clear beneficiary uh, is definitely the construction sector. Uh, we have seen an increase in development expenditure uh, for 2024. And that's going to come through in a variety of big as well as small uh, projects. So I think one of some of the more visible projects is the LRT uh, new stations that were mentioned uh, in the budget, also flood mitigation uh, and the Penang LRT project. Uh, but there are also a lot of smaller projects involving uh, airport expansion, uh, uh, water infrastructure uh, and school and hospital improvements as well. So a lot of work to go around. Uh, the stocks we like in the sector, uh, Gamuda, IJM, and for East Malaysia exposure, we like CMS. Another sector which I think is a fairly clear beneficiary is the aviation tourism sector. Uh, as mentioned, you know we have made uh, 2026 Visit Malaysia year. Uh, there will be a lot of spending uh, in the run-up uh, to that year in terms of improving tourism infrastructure as well as advertising. So I think the main beneficiaries will be the ones who are going to cater for an influx of international tourists. Uh, an obvious one is Malaysian airports. Uh, which will see uh, quite a big pickup in uh, passenger service charges uh, with international tourists. Another big winner is AAX uh, or Asia X uh, because they cater to the international markets uh, a lot more so than Capital A, which does you know uh, a, a lot more domestic flights. So I think those two stocks uh, would be a good way uh, to play uh, the upside from increased tourism. Uh, some, some smaller beneficiaries, I guess. Uh, you mentioned the consumer sector. Uh, yeah, we do see some benefit there. 
uh, we are removing poultry subsidies and price controls uh, for things like uh, eggs. Uh, so stocks like QLG, uh, Leong Hub as well, which are involved in this sector, should benefit from a more efficient cost pass through uh, now that you know the subsidies have been have been removed. Um, and finally, in terms of the tech sector, uh, I think the software space is something that's going to continue to benefit from uh, acceleration in digital infrastructure development uh, and applications and adoption. So stocks that we like in this sector, uh, the smart city sort of uh, infrastructure provider, IT Max is one of our top buys. Uh, we also like uh, stocks like CTOS uh, and Ramsol as well. With, you know, uh, with the public speaking about, you know, higher <coughs> food prices and whatnot, I think it is welcomed. Uh, some will argue that, you know, it may be a free for all for, I guess, poultry. And, and But I think the whole idea is to basically find a sweet spot in terms of the mechanism, mechanism of getting the, you know, prices all stable. Um, okay, uh, we've, hear, we've heard what you and the team like. What about the, you know, what are, well, basically some of the losers, you know, some you think will probably, you know, uh, be affected uh, by uh, by the recent budget? Yeah, I think, you know, besides the gaming sector, uh, as I mentioned, you know, a, a bit of a, uh, bit of an earnings, a negative earnings impact there uh, from the service tax increase. Uh, you know, I guess we were a little bit disappointed with the lack of uh, uh, follow through incentives for the EV uh, sector. I think we have seen a bit for for uh, motorcycles, uh, but for uh, passenger vehicles, uh, there wasn't much more to go with uh, for in this budget, at least. But it doesn't mean that you know there couldn't be more policy announcements uh, through the course of the year. Okay. So we, we sort of uh, hope for that to happen so that we can sort of uh, accelerate EV adoption in the country. Okay. All right. Uh, I think that's that quite succinct. You've, you've shared your thoughts on, on, on the overall, uh, especially when it comes to the uh, to the public or the, to the right yet and again what you shared on your you know what are the stocks that you like as well as stocks that will probably be uh, more on a negative bias uh, before we go on is there anything else that you want to highlight uh, that uh, from the report that uh, is salient to the to the to the audience today no I think I think overall it was a it was a well-balanced budget I think uh, you know we are going down the path of fiscal consolidation in a, in a progressive manner, which I think is the right thing to do, given all the cost of living pressures we are facing at the moment. Uh, and I also like the fact that a lot of the budget incentives uh, and allocations were in line with our recent policy announcements like Madani, uh, the NETR, uh, and the new industrial uh, uh, master plan. So I think, uh, you know, it is quite a cohesive budget uh, and I'm quite uh, you know optimistic uh, on execution as well. Uh, so yeah, overall, I think uh, it has a had had not a relatively neutral impact on the market. But I think over time, uh, you know, the market will appreciate uh, uh, the, the balance that is. Yeah, it's still early days. Everyone's digesting this, and you know, uh, we try yeah. tracking that. But I mean, uh, yeah, that's that's great. All right then, uh, that's a wrap for today. Thanks again for giving us an overview of your report, Anand. Uh, remember, everyone, you can get the latest market news and research from our social media channels. We are also available on Telegram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So to be sure to follow us there. If you are interested to find out how you can trade with Maybank, you can also reach out to our sales representatives. Or for new investors, apply for an account via Maybank to you using the QR code on the screen in front of you. With that, thanks for tuning on today's Borak session. Uh, this is Najib signing off. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Do 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 do